Hey everybody, welcome back to Cat's Kitchen. I'm so glad you guys are back here with me for another episode. Today we're gonna to be making teriyaki chicken with roasted vegetables. And I might make some rice on the side too. I'm not sure about that yet, but I'll, I'll figure that out later on because that usually only takes about 20, 30 minutes to cook. So first we're gonna get started with our teriyaki sauce. And before we get started with that, I just wanna ask you guys if you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe and it really helps our channel and we really appreciate that. So let's get right into our sauce. So to make teriyaki sauce, it's actually pretty easy. Um, really all it takes is soy sauce and brown sugar. And if you wanna keep this keto, you can use a brown sugar substitute. So I'm just gonna start off with some low sodium soy sauce here. I have three large chicken breasts that we're going to be marinating this with, so I'm just kind of eyeballing this recipe, but I'll leave you guys uh, a more detailed recipe down below. Okay, then I'm going to add some of our brown sugar to it. And I'm just doing this in a separate bowl from where the chicken is because I want to make sure that I blend it up really nicely with my whisk here. So I want to make sure I dissolve that sugar. I'm also to this, I'm going to add a few extra things just for some um, extra punch of flavor. I'm going to add some minced garlic in here. I'm also going to add some crushed red pepper flakes, a little salt and pepper, and possibly some ginger too, because I'm kind of going with a little bit of an Asian theme here. And I just want to add some nice flavors to this. You can control the spice, um, you know, depending on how much you like with your crushed red pepper flakes. And this is predominantly how our chicken is going to be seasoned. So just keep that in mind for how much chicken you have. You may have to double or triple the recipe depending on what you have. We're just going to mix this until a good bit of our sugar is dissolved. I'm going to add in our ginger paste now. You can use fresh ginger if you like. You can grate it in. Um, I know some people like to peel the skin. Some people leave the skins on. Whatever your preference is, is fine. I think it's nice to experiment. That way you know what you like. Because it might end up saving you stuff if you don't mind the skin. Here's what our sauce is looking like currently. I'm gonna give it a little sample here. That tastes really, really good. You can taste that ginger, you can taste everything in there. The garlic, the ginger, a little bit of the heat from the chilies, the salt, the pepper, you know, the brown sugar, the soy sauce. You can taste every little component, which is really tasty. So now I'm gonna get our chicken breast and we're gonna see if we have enough to cover it all. I may have to make a little bit more. You know what? I'm gonna make a little bit more just because I don't want our chicken to be dry. I'd rather have a little bit more marinade than not. So um, that way whenever we're on the grill and some people aren't sure what to do with their marinade whenever they're grilling. But what's cool about it is you can baste your meat, whatever meat you have with the remainder of your marinade. And that's what I do to use it all up. Plus, it keeps your chicken moist while it's on the grill. Um, you can do white meat or dark meat on the grill. Dark meat is a little more forgiving, but I often have, you know, chicken breast. So my chicken honestly is never dried out because I just, I keep an eye on it. I keep flipping it and I keep basting it. So if that ever helps you guys out there for your grilling experiences. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'm honestly just going to double this recipe that I did for my chicken. And I will see you guys back here in a second once we're adding the chicken to our sauce. Alrighty guys, so I have my chicken in my marinade here. I'm just going to get in here with my hands and just mix it up a little bit. I'd like to totally submerge the chicken. And then what we're going to do is just wrap this up, put it back in the refrigerator until about 45 minutes before we're about to cook it, then we'll pull it out of the refrigerator, let it come up to room temperature, and then we'll grill it. Now you don't have to grill this. 
you can either pan sear this, you can bake it, um, good old cast iron skillet just to get that crust on there and then just keep basting it with your marinade. There's a lot of different ways to do this. I'm just washing my hands real fast and then I'm gonna show you what this marinade looks like up close. It's, it smells and tastes super good. Definitely taste it for seasoning. See if you need any more salt or pepper, if you like the spice level, because if you need to change it, now's the time to change it. If it's a little too spicy, you can add a little bit more of your brown sugar. Um, if it's a little too salty, then you can even put like maybe a little bit of water in there just to kind of dilute it down a little bit. Um, but yeah, just try to do a little bit by little bit and keep tasting it until it's up to your liking. So next we're gonna work on our roasted vegetables and I'll show you what that looks like. Alrighty guys, so here's all the veggies and the fruits that we are washing up right now. And what we're gonna do is I already have these all sprayed with my vegetable spray. They've been sitting for about 10 minutes. And then I'm gonna get our carrots peeled and chopped up along with our zucchini. We're gonna get that chopped up as well. And then our cabbage, I'm gonna roast all three of those on 425 degrees. And then the bell peppers, cucumbers, and the tomatoes you see, I'm just prepping those for salads. But guys, I do wanna stress how important it is to wash all of your fruits and vegetables when you bring them in from the store, even farmer's market, because you never know what they're spraying on them. I heard a lot of uh, people are spraying Roundup on the plants and around the plants, and that actually is a, a high probability of causing cancer. So with that, with all the other pesticides, we just really need to take care of ourselves and wash everything that comes into our house before we eat it. So I just wanted to throw that out there for you guys, and here we go. We're gonna get these veggies prepared. All right, guys, so I have my zucchini and my the little bit of cabbage that I had on our sheet pan with some parchment paper. We're gonna season this up for the oven. So I'm gonna start with some extra virgin olive oil. We're gonna do salt and pepper, and then I'm going to do some onion and garlic powder. And then we're just gonna mix this up. We're gonna let this roast in the oven at 425. And we're just gonna have to keep checking it. It's probably gonna take about a half hour, maybe a little bit more. I'm also going to be doing carrots as well, but I'm going to probably do carrots on a separate sheet because they're going to cook at different times. And obviously this one's already full, so I'll probably just cook this one first. I'll prep my carrots and then once I pull this one out, then I'll put our carrots in. Because I did hear too, if you try to roast too much at once, then your veggies can actually steam instead of roast. So I want to... I don't want them to steam, obviously. We want them to get a little crispy, a little brown, and then that'll give us a lot of flavor. You can use whatever kind of veggies you have on hand, whether it be broccoli or cauliflower, you know, anything you like, anything your family likes. Okay, so I'm gonna pop these in the oven. And like I said, I'm gonna prep my carrots and I'll see you guys back here in a little bit. Here is our teriyaki grilled chicken. We have some rice and then our roasted vegetables, carrots, cabbage, and zucchini. Thank you guys so much for watching today. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye, friends.